Yes, so overdiagnosis is uh, uh, really an unavoidable problem with uh, uh, basically all types of, of screening. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that people die from all sorts of causes uh, apart from the disease that we're screening for. So if you detect that disease early, there is a risk that people will die from something else before this disease that you screen for would develop into something serious. Uh, another reason is that when you screen for a disease, you often detect a different type of disease than what you do when you uh, detect symptoms in patients and then make a diagnosis. So we know that many diseases, including breast cancer, is not just a single entity. We're dealing with diseases that uh, span a spectrum, various degrees of severity, and that if we screen, because the least uh, aggressive cancers takes the longest time to develop, those are predominantly the ones that we are going to find with screening, simply because there is more time to detect them. So all the aggressive tumors, those that most often kill people, develop quickly. So they fall through the mesh of our screen uh, and are not detected by screening, but pops up between screening rounds. So those are one of some of the well-known limitations uh, of, of cancer screening. So this is, this is called length bias. The longer you have to detect a cancer, the more you'll detect. Uh, and it contributes to overdiagnosis because the slowest, least aggressive cancers are predominantly the ones that are overdiagnosed, but they're still cancers, so they're still treated. And people still become cancer patients with all the implications that this has for their well being. Um, so we know that um, uh, breast screening and many other types of screening, they have harms, just like any other med med medical intervention has harms. Uh, that's really the only thing we can sh be sure about, about, about any intervention, any treatment. It ha always has harms. So the question is then if these harms are outweighed by the benefit. And that's one question if we are talking about patients that comes to us as doctors seeking treatment, he seeking help with a problem that they feel that they have. Then we have a responsibility to do our best to help these patients, even if we might not have a complete understanding, a complete knowledge about uh, uh, the effects of the interventions that we could use. But if as a society we choose to go out and offer a screening program to a healthy population, there's a completely different ob obligation on us to know what we are doing for sure. Um, so uh, uh, we have been worrying about uh, new recommendations to expand breast cancer screening for age groups where the evidence is really uncertain. There's uncertainty about the effects of breast screening for all age groups, but they're particularly large for women in their 40s and for women over 70 years of age. That's why we haven't screened those age groups for many decades in many countries. Uh, but recently, uh, new recommendations came out from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommending uh, breast screening for women in their 40s. And we were worried about that because really the foundations for, for that recommendation were different from what we're used to see from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. They have usually been a flagship for evidence-based medicine methods and has been a really trusted organization. But in this particular instance, rather than trusting the evidence that we do have for randomized trials, which we've known about for years, they have chosen to do model calculations and base their recommendations on those. And that's really deviating from some of the fundamental principles of evidence-based medicine. Uh, and we find that worrying uh, because if you base your recommendation on models, uh, you're more likely to make mistakes. All models are based on assumptions, not knowledge. It's like the weather forecast, and models cannot always be trusted. So that's a worry. It's, it's a worry both, both because we might make, make a wrong decision and harm people through screening, but also because it deviates resources from things we really know works. And if we, we look at uh, breast cancer mortality in women over 40, we are really uh, seeing a very, very positive development where the risk of dying from breast cancer for a woman in her 40s has been cut in half over the past 30 years without screening. So we've become much better at treating women, young women with breast cancer, which of course is 
an incredible success story that we should really be proud of as a pr profession and we should praise the oncologists who are responsible for this very positive development. But at the same time, it also means uh, that there has never been less reason to start screening women in their 40s because we are already doing much better than we ever have before in history, uh, really, towards this disease. So there is no crisis uh, in, of breast cancer in win, women in their 40s. We're doing very well. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, we need to be certain that if we're going to do more and invite these women to screening, we don't end up doing more harm than good.